Yeah, thank you for, for listening to me. Um, it's actually an interesting day because today, 33 years ago, I was serving as a compulsory military soldier in the German army. And uh, on this day, 33 years ago, the German border was opened and I was uh, about five kilometers away from that um, event. And I think a lot of things have changed in the world since that day. Uh, but um, um, many more things, and I'm always glad to hear the things uh, that Sean is sharing with us have, uh, have changed in the, in the printing industry. Uh, today I'm here um, to give you a bit of an overview of um, markets uh, that has become 100% digital uh, print uh, over the last 20-ish years and uh, the company NEOS that has been founded following that trend. And uh, I'm here with Marcello Baldini, uh, the uh, chief technology officer of, uh, of NEOS, who's been with the company more or less uh, from the start and uh, give you a bit of an, an, an overview uh, of uh, yeah, digital printing and how we see it uh, to develop. Um, I'm going to talk about the triggers uh, that are needed in the industry uh, to adapt digital printing technologies, industries that have benefited from the digital printing technologies, uh, which challenges had to be overcome and uh, also a little bit about what else is necessary, what else is ahead of us uh, to make this uh, happen even faster. Ceramics is where I'm going to focus on most in my, uh, in my talk. Uh, labels and textiles are the other two industries where we've seen a tremendous growth uh, of digital print uh, over the last maybe 10, 15 years, I would say. Uh, but ceramics is an industry uh, that is today almost 100% printing all their designs with inkjet printers, no longer with analog technologies. Um, so over the last 20 years, what did we have to look at? What were the drivers for the industry to make it become digital? Um, they were reducing the waste because it's a non-impact process. They were no longer crashing their tiles uh, by an impact technology. Uh, a wider variety of tile sizes is available. When I chatted with Sean before this uh, um, presentation uh, at, at 9 o'clock this morning, he said he wanted to buy a big 2 meter high tile for his bathroom. That didn't exist prior to digital printing. So there's a variety now uh, that is, uh, has not been available uh, before. Reducing the cost of finished stock, and which is improving the cash, cash position of, uh, of the company using the print, is uh, probably the, the biggest driver for the commercial people in, in, in the companies to do this. Uh, it is allowing a wider variety of designs and diversified decors. We can today print, and uh, that didn't exist before, wood designs on tiles uh, and, and whatever uh, the, the, the desire is. And obviously, we're seeing significant savings and preparation, uh, which is saving time and costs. But the challenge is that this industry, the ceramics industry, had to overcome. Uh, and it's interesting. I've, I've been on these kind of events for the last, I don't know, 10 plus years. But ceramics has never been here. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, none, none of us uh, has ever, I, I don't remember having, having ever seen uh, the tile manufacturing industry. So the challenges that I had to overcome, and Xara here from Cambridge is one of those companies who uh, added to this. The colorants are mineral. We have very abrasive material. The printheads will be scratched off and de destroyed very quickly. So new printhead technology had to be invented. Uh, they're very difficult to mill down to acceptable uh, particle size. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big effort for, for the mill process and the dispersing process, the stabilizing process. Uh, the environment the digital print is used in, in ceramics is hot and dirty and dusty. So you have to cope with a very fine uh, nozzle technology with microns in, in, a, in an area of dust and, and heat. And pre and post printing processes uh, of chemistry were not available. The ink was very expensive in the beginning, so all of these challenges had to, had to be overcome uh, to make it happen. But it did happen, and this is the message, it did happen. More than 90%, and if you listen to the, the players in the industry, they say almost 100% of the print in, in, in tiles is today inkjet. So these were the solutions, and uh, 
basically I've, I've, I've mentioned them when I, when I asked the question. We have the milling processes now available. The ink manufacturers are doing their own milling in the ceramics industry. It's something I'm seeing happening in uh, many of the bigger ink companies, and there's quite a few here uh, as well. Technology for milling and stabilizing is more and more becoming uh, a, a process that is done in the own company. Uh, the printheads are much more robust and uh, abrasion resistant and the other message of the printheads is printhead technology has been adapted to the different processes. Um, ceramics is one uh, where other expectations to the print quality are uh, in the market, uh, coming from the market. Uh, there was a response, there is now printheads available with 1200 dpi resolution, uh, very fine and very high uh, texture. Um, so all of this has been, been uh, taken care of. Recirculating system, we owe this to the ceramics industry. But we use it in our industries of uh, paper printing, film printing, textile printing now as well. We can use a white ink with heavy uh, particle sizes uh, in ink tech printing now because we have a recirculating system coming from ceramics industry. Uh, the printer design had to be adopted to the difficult, uh, to the difficult conditions, the environment in uh, where it's working in. And we're seeing a similar uh, scenario in a lot of the, the big print houses, the analog print houses, where also the environment is not as friendly as uh, the original inkjet printers wanted uh, to work in. And uh, another trend, and I think that is probably one of the key drivers, uh, has been one of the key drivers in ceramics and is, is also happening in, in other print industries. The price of the ink, the price of the, the cost of the square meter, of the printed square meter, has to be attractive enough uh, to uh, increase the volume. And uh, if we take this experience from the ceramics industry and translate this into, into other printing industry, this is basically the summary of what uh, formed NEOS. And we're using this now uh, to, uh, to serve uh, other industries. Um, there's other expectations in packaging print, for example. We're looking at higher speeds. Currently, packaging printers typically run at 300 meters per minute. Um, if it's roll to roll, a bit less when it's uh, sheet fed. Uh, but the speed expectation is much higher than in the ceramics industry. Higher accuracy requirements, finer lines, uh, better resolution, particularly packaging, although throw away, has very high expectations to quality and accuracy. Uh, we have different regulatory requirements. We have the specialists of the ink uh, industry here in the room, uh, food packaging, food contact. Uh, all of these things are requirements that have to be looked at in uh, designing the inks. And drying and curing is a different challenge uh, that has to be addressed application by application. While it's in ceramics, you print and then you put your, your tile in the oven. Uh, so uh, Neos had to learn, uh, but with the back, uh, background in the ceramics industry, uh, we can say we're a young company with experience in digital printing solutions. Uh, 2016, the company was founded uh, by Vincenzo Palumbo. Um, Vincenzo was also the founder of Projecta, one of the four big manufacturers of uh, single pass inkjet printers for, for the ceramic industry uh, 20 years before. And uh, he used his experience, he, um, he used his uh, uh, development cap capabilities and, and the experience in the market to design single pass printers for other industries. Um, what, what drives Vincenzo, and he's gonna be, uh, he's, gonna be he's, he's in his late 50s, put it this way, uh, but he's still very young and very innovative. What drives him is the passion for research and development, and that's how the, the NEOS team is formed. We're about 40 people now. Um, don't get me on the exact number, but f way more than 30 of the team are engineers, uh, development uh, uh, engineers, software experts, uh, and uh, bringing the technology into a product now or a range of products uh, that is capable to meet the, the, the very high demands of uh, printing on paper, printing on plastic films, for decor, for packaging, uh, etc.
The, uh, I think this is probably one of the most important slides here, uh, the customization oriented approach. Um, there's no two printers in, uh, in the NEOS portfolio that are the same. We always adapt, and that's company policy and strategy, we always adapt to the customer application, to the requirement of the process. Uh, and the, the whole process uh, starts with a, with a very in-depth analysis of uh, the customer environment, his expectations. The, the post-process is very often a critical factor. And with that knowledge, we then go into uh, defining the type of printheads that are going to be used. Um, currently, we work with five different printhead manufacturers. Um, the type of inks, we have an own ink division uh, with our own uh, R&D. Uh, but we also work with, uh, with other ink manufacturers. If they have the right solution, uh, they, um, they are used on our technology, on our printers. Um, we have standalone solutions. We are capable of integrating solutions in existing uh, platforms. Um, we have uh, the capability of integrating additional units like corona treatment. Uh, Flexo Rotogravur for primer, for varnish, uh, for overprint applications. Um, we uh, master the, uh, the winder and the unwinder technology and create machines of uh, very high performance with this. Yeah, so your, your, you as a customer, your application is unique to us and uh, everything is designed around the individual requirements uh, of the customer. And I like what, uh, and I, I'm citing Marcello here, uh, our final, your final product and mine, Neos, does a 360 degree study of your process <coughs> before creating the solution for your application. So it's a, an, an approach of uh, adapting exactly to the requirements. And I think that's a key differenti differentiator. We have a, a, a number of big um, printer manufacturers here in the room, and uh, the typical way is designing one model with one particular feature, which does fit to a certain industry, and then multiply it and replicate it uh, to, um, uh, uh, to a lot of customers in that industry. Uh, and it may do its, its job quite nicely and it may fit to the application. It often does, uh, very often does, obviously, otherwise the industry wouldn't function. But we go beyond this. We go really into uh, uh, adapting the technology, the, the, the printer, to the application. One of the key uh, divisions within NEOS is the, is the software department, the, um, uh, the printhead driving intelligence inside the company. Uh, and uh, the possibility to adapt uh, with software features uh, and, and um, um, how do I say this, with, with, uh, software knowledge and intelligence uh, to improve the, pro uh, the, the, the whole process. Uh, an example I would like to mention is uh, um, a digital vision system where the, um, the vision, the, the, the camera, uh, analyzes the final print and corrects the print head way of working um, with a, a nozzle compensation program uh, which is in line so a very fast reaction to potential print head deviations uh, from, from the process. Um, I mentioned before we work with uh, five print head manufacturers. They're all mentioned here, and I think uh, I've seen most of you guys in, 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 uh, in this room as well. Um, in, in our own um, chemistry and physics laboratory, uh, we do the first uh, analysis of um, ink and, and print head compatibility to the, uh, to the process. We're adapting. Uh, whatever is needed um, to uh, the ink, uh, to the waveform, to driving the printheads, uh, to make it uh, fit to the application. We have um, Ingenio is the, is the ink company, uh, majority held by, by NEOS, and um, in, in future will be in the same building with us. Uh, and there's a, a, quite a range of, uh, of different inks that we're doing, with, uh, which are water-based or UV curable. Um, that can be used and uh, the most recent uh, launches uh, of ink that we had in Ingenio was um, a UV curable ink for metal printing. I brought a few samples with me and uh, we have a table outside so if you want to look at that a little bit closer uh, that's um, 
a UV curable ink for metal printing and one of the, the key features of this ink was or is uh, that it can be formed after the printing process. So these are crown caps yeah, for, for beer bottles uh, that, are, that are formed, we can pass them around, yeah, that are formed uh, after the printing and, and curing process. So that was uh, what that ink was designed for. Um, we have UV curable ink for food applications, uh, low migration inks uh, in, in the range uh, for outdoor applications with high uh, UV light resistance. Uh, we do uh, edge bends for the furniture industry with, uh, with a UV curable concept, which where those who know the, the decor industry, color match with the paper print is most, uh, most important. Uh, we do structure print, so we have a, um, a transparent and non-colored uh, structure on top of a, a um, UV curable print. Uh, can also pass this around. And there's many more samples uh, on the table if you if you want to look at this. Um, the start of, of everything of the process is our demo center. We have uh, three different machines in the demo center in the moment. Uh, one of the most powerful is the, the Bombardier uh, row to row model uh, that we have, have um, for, for making trials. So with the customer substrates and a potentially fitting ink, we can start uh, making trials with uh, different inks and uh, different processes. We have uh, Corona Trita here uh, for, for energy adjustment, uh, etc. Um, we have the, we call it fighter. Uh, also a rotor roll model. Uh, we have a, a fighter FB, uh, which is a, is a belt. The B is, is for the belt. Um, so different uh, kinds of applications can, can be tested and, and run in our lab. Uh, coming to the end of my time, uh, not necessarily to the end of the presentation. I think it's going to be available for upload uh, in the end. Uh, but quickly running through metal packaging is, uh, you already see the examples, cardboard packaging is what we're doing uh, both for cardboard liner and also for, for sheet fed applications. Uh, the uh, flexible packaging is a project that we're working on, uh, food contact compliance on, uh, on film, uh, typically temperature sensitive films, as you know, water based and UV, eco UV inks are used in those applications. Uh, label is an available uh, process, interior and outdoor designs. And let me quickly run forward to one example that I don't want to miss is uh, a printer that has been installed in the German market last year. We call it Bombardier 230R. 230 is the width in centimeters in this case, uh, 225 uh, centimeter printing width. Um, and uh, we can run up to six colors actually on this. It's currently running on four uh, with 215 print heads uh, from uh, Rico uh, in that printer. Uh, it's a water-based thing with IRLMs uh, to print on uh, paper, on decor paper, HBL paper. And again, there's a number of samples out uh, in, in the corridor printed with that machine with a maximum printing speed of 120 meter per minute and this whole installation from start to finish is about 30 meters long um, and uh, with a printing width of 225 it's uh, I think quite a quite a beast uh, that uh, we have created within uh, development time of about three years. Last message nothing is on the shelf uh, it takes some time to develop those kind of printers uh, expect a year or maybe two uh, to develop a bespoke solution f of that, that a customer brings to us, uh, but uh, the capability in the company is, uh, is very high to solve um, many 2D applications in digital print. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.